Welcome to our very first episode of the Voice of Influence podcast. I am your host, Fong Chua, and with me on this journey is the happiest person on earth, my co-host, Stacey McPherson. On the show, our aim is to break down the barriers of public speaking, allowing you to succeed and become the voice of influence. Hey, Stacey, it's happening. It's happening right now. We're starting this whole podcast, and it's going to be amazing. So uh, what do we have in store? <laughs> This is going to be amazing. We are going to share with you some of our key nuggets that, that the people who have, who have been in our course have experienced for themselves. We are going to share some of the amazing value that they got out of it. And so we're so excited to share with you today. This is going to be a, a pretty amazing thing that we're doing here. And uh, hopefully everybody who's watching this show will be able to get some great tips, some advice, some strategies, some uh, techniques that they could put implement to them their, their lives every single day to allow them to speak more properly, to be more uh, confident when it comes to public speaking, and of course, being able to interview and uh, speak openly, and also be able to influence people uh, with their message and, and, and their stories, because that is something I find that a lot of people are struggling today. Yes, exactly right. I, and and that influence, like think about, you have something to say. Every single one of us has something to say. And if you we can unlock that for you, we can give you the skills, the tools, and the way to expand that message out to the world. How powerful is that? <laughs> well, first of all, let's let's go uh, kind of go backwards for a little bit. And let's share our experience with speaking and how we got to where we are today with regards to our uh, experience and what we're doing with public speaking. So Stacey, why don't you share with us your story? Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of background. So I loved public speaking from when I was a teenager. I I had the opportunity to compete at various things and I really, really just kind of enjoyed the whole thrill of it, the excitement and the power to be able to share something that meant something to me. And so I expanded my my vision and, and I was like, I wanna speak on stages all over the world. I want to speak on bigger and bigger stages. So luckily for me, I was. Was able to speak in um, Israel and in Budapest, Hungary, and in Thailand. And also I was able to um, speak on a stage. I got to share stages with celebrities. So people like um, Mel Gibson and um, Steve Wozniak, a variety of people, celebrities in the in Hollywood and in the business world. And also I would say my biggest stage was um, 2,000 people. So I really... I really had that goal and that desire, and then I was able to ex to achieve it. And now I want other people to have that experience. That is totally awesome. If you could share with us, what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced when it came to, came to public speaking? Okay, so one of the biggest challenges that I faced was that I um, spoke too fast. I I got so excited because I had so much to share as I just would just <laughs> speak too fast. And there are places where you want to speak fast, but then you also, of course, need to slow it down. You need to add the pauses for effect. You need to give people the opportunity to really think about what you're saying. And if you move from point to point to point so fast, you don't give them the opportunity to just let it sink in. So that was one of my biggest struggles. That is awesome. Uh, for myself, my my background's uh, a little bit different than you. I was not one of those people who always wanted to speak in front of people. Um, I find myself in the back of the room or at a very young age. Let me let me back up just a little bit more. At a very young age, I used to be very talkative, so much so that my two my grade two teacher had a a piece of tape that's dedicated with a smiley face with my name on it. And every time he heard my voice as he was on the blackboard, he goes, Fong, and he points to his desk. And I'm like, so maybe that's why I stopped talking so much in class. And it, it kind of lasted for quite some time. I never really aspired to speak in front of people, never really aspired to speak on stages or anything like that. But it was something that my parents have always said, hey, speaking is very, very important. You have to go out there and do stuff. You have to go out there and speak. And I think that's why I took up this course in grade seven, to do speaking. And I, I remember that very first time. It was, in retrospect, one of the most boringest speeches I've ever done. And I believe I started off by saying, coins. Coins are very, very important. Well, looking back, I would say that is an awful speech, but that's how I kind of got the, 
the knack of, hey, let's start doing some speaking and whatnot. And to now, uh, I've been speaking on uh, stages in, in, in states, in, in, in Canada, also been virtual stages for all over the world, uh, doing podcasts and also doing a lot of speaking on webinars and conferences and whatnot. So it's been a lot of fun and I've learned a lot throughout this period of time. And one of my biggest challenges, and I'll share this later on in our, our episodes, is really speaking in front of a camera. Because that, for me, was something completely out of the blue and something I did not expect to be so challenging. Now, before we jump into techniques and strategies and all that kind of stuff, let's talk about what's why, why is speaking so important? What's your take? Well, I will refer back to what I said at the beginning where I got so excited talking about how each one of us has a unique message to share. And each of us are so unique. Like there's no one else who've had, who's had our life experiences. Even your twin, if you're a twin, has had completely different life experiences because they interpret it in a different way. And so we each have something unique to share and to be able to unlock that for people, to help people find their voice and say their message in a way that resonates with people, that entertains them, that inspires them, that brings about the best in them. Like, I can't think of a better direction to go in life. <laughs> now, for, for people out there who isn't as outgoing and as uh, as as talkative as Stacy is, there's some people out there going, well, why do I need to be able to speak? I don't really care for spreading that message. I don't really care for spreading that word and that story of mine. For them, it's more like, okay, hey, I do hard work. I, I work very hard at where, where I'm at. Um, I do a lot of good technical work, but for some reason, I'm always passed over by other people on a promotion or when there's a uh, layoff or a downturn in the economy, I'm always the first one to get let go. Why is that? Well, I come from a background of engineering and at one point in time, I was managing or leading over 20 people on my team. And then we were hitting a downturn. Everybody was getting let go. And this one individual, this engineer came up to me and goes, is it my work? Am I not working hard enough? Am I not good enough to, to stay on? Because for some reason, every time a downturn comes, I'm the first one to be let go. And I had to be very, very honest with this individual. And I said, well, it's not because your work is not good. You're fast, you're efficient, your technical skills are amazing. But the issue is when there's a downturn, we have to be able to have people who can do both jobs, people who can do the technical work and at the same time put in front of a client so we could have them speak with that client and work with that client and build relationships with that client. And unfortunately for you, you've been one of those people who has always put their head down, work hard, crunch numbers, and that's it. So my recommendation for her was to go out there, hey, try and build that confidence, try and build that speaking ability so you can be the person that's put in front of people to build relationships with and network with and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I think speaking is so important because it's it's really underrated in some areas but that people don't understand that speaking allows you to build relationships, get ahead and really network and build that that sphere of influence so that you're able to move ahead and succeed in your life. What do you think? Yes, yes, I love how you brought that up. And I was thinking to expand even on what you were saying is that when we are able to have confidence in our voice, it brings a new level of confidence to everything that we do. It's kind of like something, a skill that you bring everywhere you go and that you use with everyone you know. It's something that you can grow and grow. Oh my gosh, I sound like a poet. But it's like so amazing when you have that level of confidence in your voice and what and then that ability to think on your feet and one of the things that we're going to cover in these um, episodes is we're going to talk about thinking on your feet and we have some very exciting techniques to share with you and that we use in the course where it is amazing how if you practice thinking on your feet in these ways and one of them is improv and improv comedy and um, things like that um, if you expand your ability to think on your feet you can be so much more capable to communicate with people in a way that delivers what you want to say in a confident way. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I realized about speaking and some of our coaches and some of our coaches are the same people have been, have been talking about how important the stage presence is and what that does for your credibility. It's one thing for you to speak one-on-one uh, -on -one with people 
but it's a whole new game when you're speaking in front of hundreds of people or thousands of people. It really sets you up as the authority, as the credible individual about that topic. Because the truth is, if you're not good at what you are at or uh, ex an expert in that topic, you're not going to be on that stage. And therefore, instantly, when people see you walk up there, no matter how nervous you are, no matter how sweaty you are, they don't see any of that stuff. Only you feel all that stuff. But they see a person, wow, this person has some expertise, something that I can learn from, and that's why they're on that stage. So instantly, you're already starting at a higher level than the people who are in the audience, and people don't understand that. And it's so important to be able to grasp that ability and connect with people on stages. And not only that, after you finish doing your talk, and I'm sure you've felt this before, is that people come to you now. Instead of you having to go to a person and an individual, hey, my name is Stacy. Hey, my name is Fong. Now people come up to you and go, hey, my name is Joe. Hey, I, my name is Lisa. I would love to chat with you more about what you just talked about on stage. And now you're really being able to build those relationships with people without you having to go out there and weed out the people that aren't your clientele or not your target market. Yes. Oh, that is so excellent. That's so great. You are like you, your example earlier, where this person was an expert in their position. They did their job very well, but they didn't have that element that helped other people see that they could do it well. It That expertise, it shows, it expands the people's perception of you to see the expertise that's already there. Now, the biggest thing that people face when it comes to speaking is that fear aspect. Yes. So I'm going to ask you, have you ever felt fear speaking in front of people? What was that like? And how did you counteract that? <laughs> so the worst, the absolute worst was when I was getting ready to interview Mel Gibson. Like that was the most fear I had felt before. And I was backstage in, um, in, you know, I was in the backstage, which was exciting, but then I was just like, focused on how I was going to prepare to be able to do this well. And I was just repeating over and over the things that I wanted to say. And I was just, 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 I was a mess, honestly. And so one of the things I did, and I did not plan this is, um, uh, some of the people backstage that were running the show, I knew them and one was sitting in a chair and she was the one that directed people when they could go on the stage. And we were friends and I just walked up behind her. My hands were shaking and they were ice cold. And I was like, can I rub your shoulders? And so I just stood behind her and I started massaging her shoulders. All that tension just went away. It was a magical moment. It was just, I was sharing something with her, but I was also just letting go of all of that pressure. And so um, it was, it's become one of my techniques. And actually, the, usually there's people around who don't mind a five minute shoulder massage. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what I've done to kind of release the tension and get rid of that, that kind of that me focus, right? Because when we're fearful, it's more of a we, fo a me focus. And then instead we want to focus on the, the group. We want to say, what, what do I have to give you? And then when we switch it from me to we, we lose that internal focus and tension. So, so, uh, the, the way to combat that fear, uh, based on what Stacy is saying is one, either have a very, very good friend with you all the time who could be there to massage you or two, bring a massager to every <laughs> place you go so you can release that tension. Uh, no, do, no, I do the massage. Oh, you do. <laughs> I do or, it. Or three, do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I actually in Thailand, I mentioned that I spoke on stages in Thailand. I actually lived there and got a um, Thai massage therapy massage certificate so i'm actually a, a time masseuse wow well personally i think i could have used that technique for my one of my biggest fears and it actually became reality so when i said hey what's your greatest fear and how do you combat it for me actually live it and my my biggest fear was forgetting what i was going to say and I'm going to apply this to uh, when I was performing, because I used to do singing and uh, performing and entertaining on stage. And my biggest fear is forgetting my lyrics and standing there completely blank with music just playing in the background. And that was my greatest fear. So, of course, as a born left minder, it's only logical for you to recite and repeat and memorize and keep on going again and again with the lyrics. And... That was my problem. 
I knew my song so much. I repeated it so much until the point I was about to step on stage. I was keeping on repeating it in my head. And sure enough, the last time I repeated it in my head, I forgot the lyrics for whatever reason it is. And sure enough, when the song got to that point when I was actually doing it live, I forgot the lyrics at that one spot. It was so hard to bear to the point where I was completely lost. And I actually went up to the mic and said, I'm so sorry. I forgot my lyrics. <laughs> so there, I lived it. So from now on, I could go, hey, I've learned my lesson. It's really not that bad because I've already lived it. And therefore, sometimes when you work so hard and recite so much, it becomes something that is it's no longer there. You, you kind of cloud your judgment a little bit and you psych yourself out and you forget exactly what you did not want it to do. So anyway, that's how I combat that fear by living it. And I've learned a lot of great lessons from just that incident alone. Now, when it comes to confidence, because you mentioned that before, at what stage and at what point in time or incident did you go, hey, I'm confident I can do this. This is not a problem anymore. I don't know. I don't know. Something I've learned is that the more you learn about something, the more you see how much there is to learn. At any topic, any topic, the more you learn, you're like, oh, there, there's so much more or any skill. There's so much more technical um, ability that you can acquire. So I would say that there's always room to grow. Always. There's always something you can do more. And whenever you see that you have room to grow and you're not there yet, there can be a level of fear and anxiety and and it's also how you interpret it, right? Because fear can also be interpreted as exciting, excitement, adrenaline, and risk, and and thrill. Like it's also how you interpret that phys physiological sensation in the body. Exactly. I had somebody ask me one day, "Does that fear ever go away?" I'm like, "Well, it depends how you see it. I don't think it ever completely goes away." As you said, it's that as uh, it's that anxiety or that excitement or that energy. And if you really think about it, whatever you are really, really good at and you are no longer anxious about it, your energy level is a little bit lower because you're calm. It's easy. You know it. You're good. But once you have a little bit of anxiety or excitement about presenting it, all of a sudden your energy level comes up. So I like to look at the fear aspect or nervous aspect like it's energy. And mm -hmm. if I can harness that fear and convert it into energy, I could give it my all. I could give it more fun i could give it more energy and it kind of gives that message becomes more influential it becomes more memorable for the audience members to see so i find that no it doesn't ever completely go away but you are confident in being able to convert that nervousness into workable energy for you to present your your message or your story now when it comes to confidence um how do you feel when you're being asked to speak something, uh, speak somewhere or at some place in time, that confidence, how do you feel? So yeah, I like how you brought it up because that confidence makes it so that you're willing to take more opportunities, take steps into the unknown. And so confidence isn't just what you per um, what you personify when you're around other people, it's also enabling you to take that next step into the unknown. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what about you? I find that with everything that you do, if you don't do it more than five, six, seven, eight times, you're never going to get confident. You're never going to get comfortable to a certain stage. Uh, for me, it was one of those things where for my podcast, I interview a lot of different individuals, a lot of different people. And at the beginning, I had script after script after script. How do I introduce them? How do I come up with questions? All that kind of stuff. And then eventually you realize, hmm, I feel like I'm over preparing that it didn't go as uh, catastrophic as I thought it would go. It didn't go as awkward as I thought it would go. It just felt fine. And all of a sudden, you could decrease the amount of time you prep for it. You could decrease the amount of anxiety you put into it. Yes, there's still a little bit nervous because you want to put on a good show. But that confidence level is saying yes to, hey, yeah, I'll interview this person. Yes, I'm going to reach out to this person and interview them. And you're going to say yes, yes, yes more. And it opens up up more doors for you to actually go in and do things. Uh, my biggest example is where I was asked to speak at this one conference and without even thinking, I said, yes, because I'm like, yeah, I get to speak. And then go, can you speak on leadership? I'm like, no problem. Yes. Can you speak at this time? No problem. Yes. Can you speak? 
for 10 minutes. No problem. Yes. And then finally it dawned on me, what, what is the topic or theme of this conference? And then they go, well, it's about uh, water conservation. And at that moment, like, I know nothing about <laughs> water conservation. But sure, I already said yes. <laughs> so then you start finding ways of making your talk work. You're already confident you could do your topic. You could do your uh, your talk. How are you going to be able to massage it and modify it so it fits the target audience or the conference that you're speaking at? And that's where that confidence comes in by saying yes and opening up more opportunities for yourself. So before we jump off of this episode, is there anything else you want to share or uh, let everybody else know what's coming up in our future episodes? Well, I'm seeing a theme and it's you're massaging your topic and you're also using massage to, to massage your nerves. <laughs> so the theme, that's, I see, I see this theme. <laughs> no, but I thought what we covered was really impactful. And I, I would encourage everyone to be able to speak better, to, to learn more about our course, the voice of influence and to to reach out to Fong or I, and we can share more information about it. I'm sure we'll share it in the links of this podcast as well. And so I was just, I loved being here and I loved sharing this. I'm so passionate about it. And I'm so grateful for our audience to be here to listen to us. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody for tuning into our very first episode here. And until next time, when you speak with confidence, you have the voice of influence. <laughs>